This piece is called Raft of the Medusa by Theodore Jericho, and I know many of you recognize it because I teach it in the 10th grade often in my MUN class. Um, this one is uh, considered probably the most, had the most major influence on Romanticism. Um, it was uh, created in 1818, and it is huge. It is 16 feet by 24 feet. It's not in the 250, but it has been on the AP exam before as sort of a compare contrast type of a painting to illustrate romanticism. So um, because of its importance, we feel like we need to teach it just like I needed to teach David for Michelangelo. So Jericho died pretty young. He died at 32, but he had a major impact on the Parisian art world. He was in Rome between 1816 and 1817, and he discovered Michelangelo's art. And um, you can notice like a lot of attention to the body and almost sculptural qualities, just like Michelangelo had. Um, and then he was re he returned to Paris, and he wanted to paint like modern history paintings. He used precise modeling of the figures in various poses that reflect a study of Michelangelo and Rubens. He also used chiaroscuro and strong diagonals that are inspired by the Baroque period. Um, for the topic he chose for this one was the shipwreck of the um, Medusa for his subject. This fits the definition of a history painting because it's large. It's multi-figured composition that represent an event in history. So the event they're talking about is um, occurred in 1816. This was a French ship, the, the Medusa, that was bound for Senegal and it ran aground close to its destination. The captain uh, hadn't been to sea in 20 years. He was considered an incompetent aristocrat, but was given the commission of the newly restored monarchy by King Louis the 18th. Now, when the ship ran aground, it, he reserved all six lifeboats for himself, his officers, and government officials, which left 152 remaining passengers. They were able to create a makeshift raft, and it was attached to, a, to the lifeboat by a rope, but when the captain realized the lifeboat couldn't get anywhere with the weight of the rope, he ordered the rope to be cut. When those on the raft were rescued, they were at sea for about two weeks. Of the 152 people who were on that raft, only 15 survived. Some of them only survived by eating human flesh. And since the captain had been a political appointee, the press is going to get a hold of this story, and they're going to use it to indict the monarchy for this and for other atrocities in the French-controlled area of Senegal. It depicts a moment, a specific moment, just like the Baroque, when survivors spot a ship in the distance, and it is a very tiny spot right there. And it, um, and I don't know if they see them, but they obviously are gonna get rescued, so it might have been not that ship that sees them. But it, um, the, it's the moment in the story Jericho chose to depict, which is completely fraught with emotions. There's survivors on the raft that are experiencing fear that the distant ship might pass them by, hope that they'll be rescued, or even if you could see the at the bottom, just kind of like resignation to dying as a result of this shipwreck. Jericho exhibits this piece in 1819 Salon and it caused controversy. Most contemporary French critics and royalists interpreted this a painting as a jab at the king on whose good grace many of them depended on. The independent liberals praised Jericho's attempt to expose the corruption of the government. This painting is the size of a typical history painting, but the fact that it's a contemporary event doesn't necessarily meet that. I mean, today it does, because it's a historical event, but the fact that he chose something so recent to paint was um, not necessarily the definition of the history painting back then. Uh, the painting does not fit into the typical function of the history painting because it doesn't ennoble, educate, or remind the viewers of a moral or civic duty, which most history paintings do. Most history paintings support the government in power, and this one does not. 
While it was intended to shock and horrify and to expose disregard for human life and incompetence, the painting conforms to academy rules in every other way. Rather than showing men actually emaciated, sunburned, or close to death, he shows them with athletic bodies and vigorous poses that evokes the work of Michelangelo and Rubens in a grand manner. He did this to generalize and ennoble his work, elevating it above the particulars of the specific shipwreck in the hope that it would speak to a more fundamental conflict, humanity against nature, hope against despair, life against death. There is a hero of this piece, and it's not a king or an intellectual, but a black man from French Senegal, who is the one who is waving at the top of the, of the image. Um, by placing him at the top of the pyramid and giving him the power to save his comrades by signaling the ship, Jericholt suggests metaphorically that freedom is often dependent on the most oppressed members of society. Okay, a couple things about composition. There are strong diagonals that ends with the sail and helps draw our attention towards the waves. So this one here, the waves look like it's about to, to completely annihilate this. And then this strong diagonal that points to the hero that's waving to the sh distant ship. And then there's also pyramids of bodies that was really common, especially in the Renaissance. And again, that helps it fit the standard of what the salon was looking for. Uh, the position of the raft is foreshortened and the viewer's space in the, would, would, I'm sorry, the position of the raft helps draw the viewer in because it's foreshortened and in the viewer's space in the foreground. The way Jericho did this is that he actually made studies by using corpses that he was able to, um, to obtain in order to create this. And uh, he got him because he had some friends who worked at a nearby hospital and he brought them into his studio and he like painted them. So a lot of this is based on what he saw. He also was a, had a carpenter rebuild the raft for him to study so he could create it as best he could on, on the canvas. This became an icon of the romantic style due to explicitness, emotional intensity, and a lack of a moral or a heroic tale, and more about a contemporary event. So it's an important piece to study, so which is why it's included in, uh, in your packet. Okay, that's it.